If you're someone who likes to live life on the edge, perhaps you go skydiving and rock climbing on the weekends, then walking or cycling across the Granville Bridge might just be for you. Cars, trucks, and buses whiz past you as you try to stay inside the narrow sidewalks with no railings or barriers to protect you. As you hug the sides of the bridge to avoid the traffic, a glimpse of the sharp drop-off below to Granville Island might just give you an exciting rush of exhilaration, or maybe vertigo. And just when you think it's all over, there's a final treat. Two crosswalks with faded paint and no signals crossing three lanes of what's essentially highway traffic. That might be you, but I am not that kind of person. I take Google Maps advice for crossing the Granville Bridge, which is to do a U-turn and take the Burrard Bridge instead. So while this is why I was excited to hear earlier this year that the city of Vancouver was considering a plan to build a greenway down the middle of the bridge. It would include a walking path, a two-directional bike lane, extra room for seats, signs, and an ice cream stand. There's also the possibility of adding an elevator to Granville Island, but that's a story for another time because this story quickly turned into another story and one we've heard many times before, traffic. <laughs> Here's the thing, in order to create space for the Greenway, the city would have to remove between two to four car lanes from the bridge, and that's made a lot of people nervous about how that might impact traffic on the bridge. Fewer lanes means less room for cars, and potentially more traffic. Canby Street and Burrard Bridge all had car lanes replaced with bike lanes within the last few years, and for many, the Granville Bridge feels like the last thing that's preventing a traffic catastrophe in Vancouver. But the evidence tells a much different story. Traffic really shouldn't be a concern here because it is physically impossible for the Granville Bridge to ever reach its full capacity. The traffic on a bridge is really the sum of all the traffic on all the roads leading into the bridge. And in the case of the Granville Bridge, there just aren't enough large roads around it to fill it with traffic. Looking at traffic patterns throughout the day on Google Maps really demonstrates this. You have smaller streets like Howe Street and Hemlock Street with two to four lanes feeding into Granville's eight. Those streets do get congested during rush hour, but Granville Bridge is always under capacity. In fact, at its busiest, the bridge is seeing less than half the amount of traffic it was originally designed for. Why it was designed this way is a whole other story for another time, so before I digress any further, I want to make this point. From what I can tell, we almost have a knee-jerk reaction to projects like this in Vancouver. Anytime anybody proposes removing a car lane for a bike lane, we get up in arms about traffic when the evidence suggests that it's a moot point. And to be honest with you, I think in this case, it's really distracting us from having a much more interesting conversation about the Granville Bridge. There's a line of the city staff report for this project that really sticks out to me. The project would take advantage of excess road space on the bridge by reallocating traffic lanes to create a unique experience and sense of place. This is huge. If you look at sketches of the proposed plan, you can see that there's a lot more going on in the design than just people walking or cycling. You have seating, tables, vegetation, and yeah, even that ice cream cart. To me, that's a huge departure from how we've designed walking areas on bridges in Vancouver. And in fact, it's part of a much larger global movement. There's an organization called Project for Public Spaces who coined the term streets as places. Their idea is that streets are more than just for transportation. They hold the potential to become public spaces. Spaces for gathering, for markets, events, you name it. And I love their motto, streets you want to go to, not go through. But what makes this project both interesting and concerning for me is that I actually think the design could be the very first of its kind. I spent quite a bit of time looking for similar bridge designs around the world, but I couldn't find any that placed pedestrian paths and bike lanes in the center lane with traffic on both sides. The closest example, I think, is the Brooklyn Bridge in New York, which does have a pedestrian path in the middle, but it's elevated above the car traffic. So for me, that's a very risky idea and one that's very much worth talking about. And when we're done making this conversation about traffic, if that happens, I hope we can have that discussion because frankly, Granville Bridge could use all the help that it can get. Oh my God, what the fuck, oh my God, it's all love. Sometimes we do it for the kids, other times we gotta do it for us. Somebody always wanna tell you, you ain't doing enough. But if you listen to everybody, you'll be looking all crazy and fucked up. <laughs> okay, everyone is stupid, everyone is dumb. Shout out to the moon, what up? shout out to the sun. What up? to the ocean and shit Pacific, specifically, but it's all the same ocean, literally, dog on grease, haters can't stick to me.
This is basically soup. This I'm just basically eating soup now. I'm, this is disgusting, but also delicious. I don't know, why can't I stop eating? 